now that we set up Prisma and our database and Superbase, we are going to be creating the database schema necessary for our movie management application. The first part of the schema will involve models necessary for our authenticated user. I will be making use of the Prisma adapter from the next auth library to save an authorized user to our database. The last part of the schema we involve the watchlist model, which will, you know, be um, used to store information about the movies that, you know, a user is going to add to their watchlist. When we have everything set up, and before all that, we're going to also set up our Prisma clients so that we could create database migrations and interact with our database. On the next of Prisma adapter, um, it requires you to install on um, Prisma clients and you know the, the, the package from Athnext auth slash Prisma adapter. If you follow, if you float along with the startup files, you wouldn't have to install any of this. So let's quickly get started with you know with setting up our Prisma adapter in our application. Well, first off, you know we're going to set up Prisma clients first. Okay, so uh, let's get straight into that. So in our, in our code base, we are going to write under our lib folder, we are going to create a new file. We're going to call it um, prisma.js. So what we are going to do right here, we, are, we, we want to um, you know, create um, an instance for our Prisma clients. Remember, creating an instance for Prisma clients. So we want to make sure we have at least a single instance that is shared across the entire application which will help improve the performance and reduce the number of connections to our database, okay? So let's get started with that. So to set up our Prisma client properly so that we could use it throughout our entire application, we have to import it. So we're going to import Prisma client from at Prisma client. Then we are going to export a Prisma variable. This is the variable we're going to use to um, this is going to store our Prisma clients. I'm going to export it so that we can import it in any part of the application and make use of it. So we're going to say um, export const Prisma will be equals to. So first, going to you know we're going to um, check um, if um, you know we're going to check if uh, a global Prisma object exists. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create a new instance of Prisma clients and assign it to Prisma which is the, like assigned to the Prisma variable. And if it does exist, it's going to use that existing instance that's, you know, that is in global.prisma, okay? So this is going to ensure that, you know, only one instance of Prisma client is created and reused across, um, across multiple requests. And like I said, the, the main reason for doing this is to improve performance. So let's do that. So we're going to say um, global.prisma, this is, this is like, um, this is the global Prisma object. So we're gonna um, um, use conditional operator or, sorry, or, okay. And then we are now going to instantiate a new Prisma client object. So we say new Prisma um, client, the one we just imported, okay? With parenthesis and we're good. Okay, so this is it. But we also now want to check if um, the environment is um, not in production, and you're going to assign it down the uh, the uh, Prisma instance to global.prisma. So this is done to ensure that the Prisma instance is shared across all requests in the development environment. So let's do that. Um, move to a new line, and we're going to say uh, if process.env dot node underscore inf, that's the node environment, is not equals to production, okay? And then we say global, sorry, global dot prisma is equals to, sorry, sorry, is equals to um, prisma. And that's it. We are, um, we are good to go. We've, uh, we've created a Prisma variable that's going to be used in um, in multiple parts of application. And it's going to reduce the number of different requests you're making to our database. Okay? So now we've set up um, now we've set up um, our Prisma file. We're going to um, go to our next 
um, a configuration file and set up Prisma adapter. So let's get straight into that. So to do that, we're going to go to our um, next auth configuration file, which is located at pages, API, auth, and the next auth file that we created um, the video, um, earlier. And we're going to go right above providers. So we're going to add a new object, a new key in our object called um, adapter. So we're going to say uh, adapter. Okay. It's going to be Prisma adapter. And Prisma adapter, oops, and Prisma um, adapter is going to be imported from our next off slash Prisma adapter, which like you see, it's been also imported in my case. And I'm then going to pass in a, an, an argument to Prisma adapter. So the argument is going to be the Prisma client that we just created and the one we just exported, which is um, this one here. Remember, we are exporting it right here. So we're going to import it and you know pass it as an, arg an argument to the Prisma adapter um, class. So we're going to say, um, we're going to type in Prisma. And if you're using um, VS Code, you should be able to import it automatically by typing it. If it doesn't, you have to manually import it. So um, make sure you don't import um, the Prisma client itself. Make sure you, you import the Prisma file that we just exported or we created. So we're going to Type pass in Prisma and then going to add a comma because you know we are inside an object. So we save it. And that's it. That's literally it. We have um, set up Prisma adapter and we have set up um, our Prisma client that's going to be used in every part of the application. Next part now, which is the interesting part, is setting up our schema for our, um, our application. Let's get straight into it. So we're going to head to um, the schema file which is located under the Prisma folder. Okay, I'm going to close these um, blueprint folders. Okay, so I'm going to go to schema.prisma and I'm going to start um, writing our models for the database. And I'm going to write everything and then I'm going to explain what um, each of them does after writing the whole models. It's going to make it easier to comprehend, okay? So I'm going to um, clear this out. Oops, I'm going to clear this out and I'll start right here. So I'm going to write the account or create the account model. So to create a model in, 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 a, in a Prisma schema, you, you start by um, writing the model keyword and the name of the model. So in our case, we want to create the account model. So we're going to say um, model. And I recommend you download the, um, the Prisma extent, necessary Prisma extensions to make this possible. It's going to improve your productivity and help you to format your schema and you know, also provide tips and whatnot. And I'll place um, links to the extensions in the description below. So let's get started. So type in model and then the name of our model, which is, um, let's start with capital letter, and, um, account. And it's going, to, it's going to be like an object, okay? A JavaScript object. So we write this um, curly braces. And then we're going to start writing in um, the attributes of our model. So we're going to start with an ID. And this ID is going to be of a string type. It's going to be of a string type. And you're going to pass in um, an ID, uh, which, is, um, a, which defines a single field ID on the model. And then we're going to add um, default at default which means this is the default value for this field default and we're going to pass in a cuid which is a global unique identifier based on the cuid spec and then that's just it an id okay so after an id after adding an id for our account we want to add a user id as a string so we're going to have a user id and it's going to be of, of type string after that we're going to create um, add type attributes and it's going to, also going to be uh, a string. So um, if we head back to uh, our Prisma, you know, our Prisma, the next auth docs rather, uh, it's recommended if you scroll further, and as you can see here, um, it has all of this, which is what we're going to write down. This is a recommended schema if you want to use a Prisma adapter with your, um, with your, uh, with your PostgreSQL, with your Prisma um, database um, file. So what it does is that this is the right um, convention to use if you want to um, enable the functionality of saving an authenticated user to your database. So what it's saying right here is, uh, yeah, what this is going to help us to do is when next we click on the sign in button on our application, after authenticating, it's going to save the basic data of our um, of our user to the database. And this is the schema that's going to make it possible. Okay, so let's get back into writing our schema. So we're going to have the type of string. And we're going to add passing the provider attributes, provider. 
and gonna be the type of string. And if you, you could just um, go ahead and copy the whole thing and you know, paste it and maybe check back for any additions that I made. Um, but uh, I recommend you, you, you follow along. So we have the provider um, attribute. Next, we're gonna have um, provider account. Oops, we have to make it camera case, remember? Provider account ID, which again is going to be a type of string. Next, we're gonna have a refresh, have a refresh token, and it's gonna be the type of our string. And it's gonna be optional. Like right? not every um, authentication user is going to have a return string passed back to, uh, passed to it. I'm gonna pass in um, DB, and this is a, this is a native um, database type that should be used for this field. So DB dot um, sorry db dot um, text and it has to be capital T Oops. db dot text next is going to be the access token access token and again it's going to be the um, the type of um, the type of string and it's going to be optional and again it's going to be of the um, the database native database type and I'm going to pass it uh, Add text to it. Next is going to be um, expires at expires at is going to be an integer, but it's not going to be a number. Integer and it's going to be optional again. And next you have um, token token type, which is going to be a string again, which is going to be um, optional. Next is going to be uh, scope. So scope is like um, the set of permissions that you know we the the user has authorized us to access. So in our own case, when we sign up with GitHub, we, we do, the scope that we were, we were allowed to have access to was just the name, the, the the name and the email. I think the name, yeah, the name and the email. So uh, the scope is going to be a type of string, and again, it's going to be optional. Next is going to be um, the ID, um, the ID token, and type of string again is going to be optional, and. And you're going to have be you're going to be the the, um, the native database type so db dot text. Next is going to be the session the session state, and it's going to be an optional string. Okay, so now that's all. Um, that's the the first part of the model. Rather, they're going to give you some space, and now this is going to be the important part. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna later, um, you know, um, link a user to this account, okay? But first, we're gonna create a user model later on. So we're gonna leave this blank for now. And now we're gonna create the next model, which is going to be a session model. And um, to do that, of course, we start with the model keyword and then session, call it brackets, call it braces rather, and have an ID attribute. And it's gonna be a string type and a single field ID, which is going to be unique, and it's going to be the default, um, the default value for this field. We're going to pass in uh, CUID. Next is going to be um, a session, a session token, which is going to be the type of um, string, and it's going to be unique. So. Uh, this means that uh, the value of this um, session, is, this session token is going to be unique, unique. And um, next is going to be um, user user ID, which is going to be a type of string. Next is going to be um, expires, which is going to have uh, a date time, which is a timestamp um, data type for um, Prisma um, schema. And then uh, a user attributes. Okay, we're gonna leave this for now. So we're going to, you guys are going to be the same thing with the account mode. We're gonna link um, a user in here later on, so, which is not later actually. We're gonna be creating a user, a user model uh, right now. So we're gonna move down a bit, and of course, type in model, then user, and call the braces, and. We would give it an ID. It's going to have an ID, of course, and it's going to be a string in our case. And it's going to be going to have the, um, the single ID. And then, of course, like the previous one, default and passing CUID onto it. Then we have the name, which is going to be the type of string. It's going to be optional. Then uh, 
email, type string, optional again, then we're gonna have our um, email verified. So it's going to the value gonna be a timestamp of when the email was verified. So we're gonna pass in date time, and of course it's gonna be optional. And uh, then um, image, it's gonna be like the profile picture of the of the of the authenticated user. It's gonna be a string, and it's gonna be uh, optional. Next, uh, account. So a user can have more than one account, okay? So, you know, there's some apps where you could you could sign in with GitHub and later link that account to maybe another Google account you get. So you can maybe later sign in with both GitHub and Google and still have access to the same account. So a user can have more than one account. These are gonna um, reference in here. So we're gonna have the account attributes and now we're gonna pass in the data type. Now models can be the data, data types. So we're gonna pass in um, this account model that we created earlier. So since a user can have more than one account, we're gonna pass in the data type of accounts, but not just accounts, but an array of accounts. So we're gonna type in account and pass in. So this means it's gonna be an array of, you know, an array of uh, accounts. As you can see, so now we, you're going to need a relation to it, so which you're going to handle later. So after your account, the next attribute is um, session. Um, sessions, rather. So guess what? What do you think? So see, if we had an, a, had an account attribute and we're passing an array of um, the accounts model, for sessions, we're going to also pass in an array of the session model. So we're going to pass in session and, and um, these um, square brackets. So we're going to head back up here and reference um, user in both of these places. So we're going to move back here. And we're going to pass in the user attributes here. So user is going to be the newly created user model. And I'm going to give it a relation field. Okay, so we're going to say at relation, which is going to define a connection between two different models. So we're going to define a connection between the account model and user model. So we're going to say relation. And now what, what fields do you want to you know, relate to it? What fields do we want to, you know, relay uh, to it? So we're going to type in um, fields, the fields you want, the list of fields that are of the current model that I want to reference. So fields, so like, like you know, since we are linking um, these two together, what is that attribute or this field here? Which of the fields here do you want to, you know, to store that relation? So in our case here, we're going to use, use user ID. So in here, we're going to say, uh, user id okay and then uh references so you're going to be a list of field references of the model on the other side of the relation in our case it's going to be id which is the id um here okay and then going to print the prism adapter we're going to have an on delete so this specifies the action to perform when a reference entry in the reference model is being deleted so on delete we're going to pass in a Cascade. Now we've done that, we're gonna um let's see, please I'm not missing anything. Uh I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go here. Do we have a why are we having an error? This line is not a valid field attribute definition. Okay, so according to the Prisma adapter, we also pass in um unique. We define the compound unique constraint for the specific fields. So in here we're gonna pass in provider and provider accounts uh, ID and uh, we're good to go so in our session remember we also reference session here so in here we're also going to do the same thing so we're going to say uh, user is going to be um, user and at relation field is going to be very similar and we're going to pick out the user ID, which is uh, this one here, of course. I'm going to pass in our references. It's really going to be the same thing that we have in the account um, model. So I'm going to say uh, references is going to be ID, and uh, on deletes is going to be uh, cascade. Okay, so now we've done that. We are done, done with, uh, no, we're not done. I think one optional one is gonna be verification token. So, so I'll explain why this is necessary later on. So model, we're gonna have verification, verification 
token and person i have curly braces and the first field is going to be um identifier identifier and it's going to be the string data type next field is going to be um, token which is going to again going to be string data type and again token is unique so we have to pass in uh unique unique constraints and expires a few so the timestamp of when the notification token is going to um, expire then down here we're going to say add add uh, unique and pass in identifier and token and we are good to go this is uh the recommended um database schema for um that the prisma adapter prisma adapter um recommends so in our case we don't we don't need a shadow, a shadow database url this is only needed when using a cloud provider that doesn't support the creation of a new database like heroku in our case we're using prisma and prisma um you know supports the creation of the of new databases heroku doesn't and uh down here we have preview features we don't need this one too because we're using a higher prism we're using a version of prism that's higher than version 3. uh okay so let's head back here and we're gonna create the uh the watch list uh the watch list model which is you know it's gonna save which is gonna like hold the um the necessary data of ai of like a single watch list and they're gonna pass it to um the user model so let's get straight into that so down here gonna be the last one i'm gonna say a model watch list and the first field is going to be an id of course and the id is going to be a um, string data type sorry rather it's going to be um, an integer sorry it's going to be an integer and id and it's going to be default and it's going to auto increment so when, when it is a new watch list it's just going to you know auto increment the id so like the first watch is going to have an id of one then if we add in another watch list that new watch list we have an id of two next field is going to be a movie id this is going to be the id of the movie this will be necessary later on as we see how this is going to be important when we later progress in our application so you are going to have a name field and a name field of course is going to be a string we're going to have a rating field and it's going to be an integer and you're going to have a user id um, user id field and it's going to also be a string and i'm going to have poster so poster is the post office is going to hold a string of the URL of the of the of the um, of the movie's poster um, image. So going to be a string. And next, the user. So this is the the user that owns this watch list. Okay. So I'm gonna define the user field here and pass in the user model and give it and define the relation in here. So we're gonna have fields and we're gonna have user ID. Then the references which is going to be the ID here. And I think I think that's all. Next is going to be, um, the, now we need to know the time the, the watch list was created, okay? We're going to have another field called created at, which is going to have the date and time stamp and uh, default and passing now. So this means um, now is like a function in Prisma. So like when we, um, it, we create a new watch list. It's going to also like add the time that watch list was created. Okay, so, that, so the, the function now is like going to like immediately register the time it was created and pass it in as a value. So you created that field object. And it's going to be unique. We'll pass in add add uh, unique. And so we're defining a relationship here. So the user ID and the movie ID. And we're good to go. So we're having some errors here error validation this line is not a valid field or attribute definition so let's see are we mixing something up let's go to um let's go here and it says user user at relation field user id reference id on the mm, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead to you know push your database to our super base um database which is going to be here so for when i click on real ranger clone and we're going to check our database so of course we're supposed to have an uh, 
an empty database. So we're going to click on the table editor and you can see no entities available. This schema has no entities available yet. So we're going to push um, this schema so it can get started. So I'm going to um, create, launch a new terminal. And uh, we'll just that. Okay, so to, to um, go back to the docs here, it says we should run, um, it says once to see your schema, use the Prisma CLI to generate the Prisma client. Now, if you had run the, um, using installer files, you don't have, this command is going to work. Okay, because we've already installed Prisma and the Prisma CLI. You're going to run npx Prisma generate. And uh, after that, you've got the database to use a new schema. We're going to use the Prisma migrate command. So we're going to run. Um, so npx, uh, NP, npx means like it's going to automatically um, use the package manager that you used to install the library. Okay, so um, in our case, it's yarn. So we're just going to write it directly. And it's going to be um, yarn Prisma um, generate. So um, yarn. Prisma um, generate. Okay, so it's giving us an error. So let's see how we could fix um, this um, issue. Okay, uh, we have our error staring right beside us, and we are not supposed to use the um, column. It's supposed to be a command, a comma. So that was a um, reminded error I made there. So I'm clear this out. And, oops, how did you? First place. Okay, so I think we are good to go. Okay, we have one more here, and let's see what's wrong. Error validating user in model watch list the relation field user is missing an opposite. Oh, okay, so uh, we haven't added watch list up here. So in user, the user can have multiple accounts, multiple sessions, and multiple watch list items. So we're gonna say watch lists it's going to be a watch list an array of watch lists and we are good to go so we're going to run um our um command again yarn prisma i think it was um yarn prisma generate yarn prisma generate as you can see it says generated Prisma clients, and you can now start using Prisma clients in your code. You see, it's you know it, it has generated a Prisma client successfully, which we um, which we wrote here. So the doc says the next thing we should run is um, npx Prisma migrate dev. So we're gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna type in mark is you're using yarn, so you know, type that in instead. npm Prisma um, migrate dev and give it some few seconds and you can see it's using the connection string that we provided from superbase to so give it a few seconds so you can um, migrate and as you can see here it says um the following migrations have been created and applied from new schema changes and if you check off um a new folder has been added we say migrations which gives us um basic data of you know it was an SQL file for us. It's an ORM that you know writes this SQL queries for us automatically. So it has done that for us and it has applied our migration. Okay. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna check our database, we're gonna refresh to see if there's any new changes. And as you can see, right at the, at the sidebar, you can see accounts. And if you click on it, you can see you have an ID, user ID, type, provider. Provider account ID, refresh token, access token, um, fields like we define our schema. And if I click on my watch list, which is an important feature that we need to get our watch list functionality running, you can see we have it here, which is uh, which the ID field, the movie ID field, name, rating, user ID. You can see it's, 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 it also shows the, um, the data type beside them. So, yeah, so let's look at the account um, model. So the, the account model here um, has an ID field with the ID attributes, indicating that you know this is a primary key for um, this table, and the um, the defaults the, these are default CUID um, ensures that this field gets a new unique identifier generated um, automatically. The user ID um, field represents the user to 
whom this account belongs, so the authenticated user, the ID, and the type and the provider fields here. They specify the type of authentication and the provider's name respectfully. So in our case here, it's the type will most likely be um, uh, OAuth, and the provider is going to be GitHub because that's what we are using. The provider account ID um, stores the account ID returned by the authentication provider. So in our case, it's going to use the one um, provided by returned by your GitHub. And this is going to be used uniquely identify the user across different providers. So in our case, they will later add a new provider, maybe Google or, um, or let's say uh, Stack Overflow. Yeah, you could any um, OAuth provider that next auth um, provides. Uh, it's going to help us um, uniquely identify them. Then we have the optional field, which is a refresh token, and the um, assets token expires at um, token type, scope, ID, uh, token, and session states. These fields are, you know, are very specific to some to some authentication providers, and we store them for future. So it's so most likely when you want to add a new provider, this will be depending on the provider. These fields will come in handy. Okay. So the next one we're going to look at is the session model. So the session model um, defines a session in our database, and it's a period of time when a user is authenticated, and it's maintained using cookies. And so when a user logs in, a session is going to be created for them, and when they log out of the session, uh, the session expires, and then the session is then deleted. So this session, mo this session model has four fields, as you can see, ID, session token, user ID, and expires. Uh, the ID, like previously said, is a unique identifier for the session generated with CUID, and uh, which you know makes sure a new ID uh, makes sure a new ID is generated um, automatically. Then we have the session token, which is a, a unique token used to identify that particular session. The user ID field um, is a foreign key that references, as you can see, is a foreign key that references the um, the ID of this user model that we defined here. Okay. And it indicates that uh, indicates you know which session. So when we have the session, it indicates the user that owns this session. Okay. Then we have the expires the field, which is a timestamp indicating when the session is going to expire. So using this um, session model, we are go we can easily keep track of users of which users are currently authenticated and when the sessions are going to uh, expire. So it, this can you know we could take advantage of this to provide a better user experience by automatically logging users out after a certain period of inactivity like for security purposes. So we're gonna explain the user model um, next. So the user model um it defines the attributes and relationships for the user in our application. The uh, the ID field, as you already said, it's the is a unique identifier for each user and is set as the primary key using the ID. Uh, we call it the ID decorator. The name field is the the user's name, and the email field represents. Uh, the user's email address. We have the email verified, which represents the date and time that the user's email was verified. Then we have the image field, which represents the, um, the user's profile picture. The accounts field uh, is a list of accounts that are associated with that user. So it is defined, uh, we, we, we later define its relation uh, up here, as you can see. And uh, it's, it specifies the relationship with the accounts model. Then we have the sessions field, which is a list of sessions that are associated with the user. And it's like the accounts field, it's also defined using the relation decorator to specify its relationship with the with the uh with the uh with the sessions model, I think. Yeah, with the sessions model. Then the uh the watch list model, just like the, the two previous um fields, it's uh it's a list of watch lists or movies that the user has added to the watch list. Like it's a, it's a list. So uh if we add one movie, two movies, three movies, everything is going to be saved to this um watch list um field. So it's a list of um every movie that's added to the watch list. And we've previously defined the um the relationship in our watch list model. Next is uh the verification token. So this uh, model is used to uh, keep track of verification tokens that are sent to the users during the email verification process. So assuming we have, we add an extra authentication provider which needs to send an email, the verification token is what handles that. 
So when the user signs up or changes their email address, you know, next month is going to send them a verification mail containing the link to verify their email address. And the link contains a verification token that is you that is unique to that particular user and expires after a certain amount of time. Uh, we have the identifier token here, which uh, which uh, is, is used to identify the user who the token was sent to. The token field stores the verification token itself and uh, the and it's marked as unique, of course, because you know, and it can only be used um, once. Then the expires field is a timestamp of when the token expires and you know it's rendered um, null or, or invalid. So this model ensures that users can only verify their email address if they have access to the verification token that was sent to them. And now the watch list um, model. This model is created to handle the user's watch list functionality and it has the ID field and it's the, the ID is great, the primary key of the table and it's set to auto increment. So a unique value or a new number, a new ID is automatically generated for every single movie that has been added to our watch list. The movie ID is going to hold the ID of the movie to be added. The name stores the name of the movie, the rating, the rating of the movie. The user ID is the is going to hold the ID of the user who added the movie. So that's going to be our authenticated user. And the poster is the image of the, the URL, of course, of the image um, or the image source. Then we have this um, user field here, which sets up the relationship between the watch list and the user models. And it specifies that this, um, this user ID in the um, the user ID in the watch list field is, is is going to reference this ID in our watch list um, model. Then created that is a timestamp you know that specifies when a, a, a movie was added to the watch list. So this line specifies that the combination of the user ID and the movie ID should be unique in the table. We're making a quick um, correction to our schema. So uh, in our user model, we are going to add the unique attributes to our database and we're going to head to command line and type in yarn prisma migrate dev so now we can apply this um, new change to our schema and we're asked if we want to create and apply this migration we're going to type in y which means yes i'm going to give it a new migration name i'm going to call this um correction give it some time to apply the migration. And here it says the database is now in sync with your schema. Now let's check if our schema is working properly. So we're gonna re-authenticate our user and we'll see if your data is going to be saved in the database. So we're gonna close our server and gonna run and dev. Now it's successfully compiled, we're going to refresh our application. And we're going to click on Get Started. And our user has been successfully um, authenticated. So let's check our um, super big database to see if there's going to be any correction. As you can see here, it's been refreshed. And we have um, in our user model, in our user table here, we have an ID, the name, our email, email verified is null, and our image, the URL to our image. If you go to accounts, you can see we, we have the ID, the user ID, and the type. So the type is the type of application that was provided, that was used, and in our case it was an OAuth. And our provider is GitHub and our provider account ID, which is going to use to differentiate in an in a situation where we have multiple um, um, sets where we could authenticate our user. So these provider account ID helps us to differentiate um, the provider that was, uh, that was being used. So yeah, so now we've confirmed that our schema is working properly. And in the next part of the video, in our tutorial rather, we'll be looking at um, data fetching next year.